That time of year, sports are in full swing. It might be professional, collegiate, or even kids. And a topic that are in the headlines all the time, concussions. And today we have Dr. Mader from the Mayo Clinic here to educate us on this. So welcome to River City Live. Thank you. This is one of those topics that I just feel like it's trending all the time, concussions. They're hard to diagnose. We're starting to see them now in younger kids. Mm -hmm. So let's just start with the question, what exactly is a concussion? So that's a great question, and it's a, a not quite a straight answer either. So we think a concussion is a functional, not a structural injury to the brain, um, and it's caused by a direct hit to the head or an indirect hit. So you could have a player versus player, helmet to helmet. You could have a player versus the ground. Um, and the brain shakes, and it creates a functional disturbance that can cause different symptoms. You can have the most common uh, physical symptoms. You can have headaches, nausea, visual disturbances. Um, after the fact, you can get um, some changes in sleep, changes in behavior. Um, and so any of those signs and, and symptoms need to be recognized so the athlete's pulled out of play. Now, how significant are they? So, for example, let's say you sustain one. What's happening to your health? Is this something that's, you know, really dangerous or do we not know yet? So I think we, we understand that it's a brain injury and we understand that it is dangerous and we want to make sure that um, it is recognized so that you can allow your brain time to heal. So if an athlete is allowed to continue playing, that's when we get concerned that there could be a second injury, um, sometimes called second impact syndrome, that can be quite dangerous um, and potentially life-threatening. Um, so if we pull the athlete from play and let, let their brain rest, that's going to be the most important part. The question that, that mo most of the research is looking at now is, is how long do you rest? How long is needed for the brain to heal? And that's, that's very individualized. And you were on the board that helped the state with these guidelines as far as when do you return, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct, yes. So I'm a, I'm a member of the Florida High School Athletic Association Sports Medicine Advisory Committee. And we have created a return to play form that can be filled out once the athlete is asymptomatic back in school full time because these athletes we're talking about are students first, they're student athletes. Um, and once their symptoms are gone, they're back to their normal behavior, normal school activity, then a physician can sign off saying that they can do a return to play protocol. And that protocol is a, a stepwise progression to allow them to get back to play safely. So it's not sign the form back into play the next day. It's at least a five day stepwise protocol that we want it to be supervised. Now at higher levels, you know, pros, college, even high school, there's doctors out there, mm -hmm. there's trainers. But when you get to, let's just say like younger kids, for example, mm -hmm. there's not, and you don't have the experience training. So what are we looking for? So let's just say there is a significant hit. What are some signs that we could see as parents and coaches to right away know like it's time to take that kid out? Sure. So um, the main ones, like I mentioned, would be if, if a player's confused, if they come off and go to the wrong sideline, for example, that's not an okay behavior and needs to be recognized. If they're having trouble with their vision, if they um, are bad headache, nausea, um, they're more emotional than, than we would expect. If they're staggering, they're having balance problems on the sideline, all of those are signs to pull them out. What about the eyes? I notice physicians always looking at mm -hmm. that are you just having a hard time tracking? Is that what it is when you do that? So initially you're looking for any red flag signs, we call sure. them. So a dilated pupil or uneven, uneven pupil or they're not, not able to follow directions. Those would be red flag signs that maybe it's more than just a concussion and they need to get pulled and maybe even brought to the emergency room. Wow. But otherwise, a good point is the tracking because the vestibular ocular, it's how the brain talks to the eyes and tells them to move. That is one of the most um, affected uh, symptoms and something that we can recognize with certain sideline tests. Yeah, because I think that's a quick one. And obviously, you know, even if you're not a physician, if you look for that, it's a, it's a really big indicator to do something. Mm -hmm. What can we do, if anything, to avoid them? So avoiding concussions is one of the holy grails. I mean, if we could have a concussion-proof helmet that doesn't exist, that would be great. But really, it's, it's learning the technique of the sport to help prevent the impacts that could cause this. And so, for example, yes, one of the most prevalent sports is football. And so learning the proper tackle techniques using the USA Heads Up Football um, protocol is, is one of the great ways to do that. They're looking at rule changes. They're looking at limiting contact during practice time. But it's still important to teach the yeah. right technique. And we've been talking about football, but it's interesting because you were saying before when you were in commercial break, it's not necessarily football. There's other sports where it's actually the prevalence rate is higher. Right. So um, soccer is one of the big ones. And in similar ruled sports, it's, it's interesting interesting that women or females are actually at higher risk um, than males is for, for concussion. So women's soccer over men's soccer and women's uh, lacrosse over men's lacrosse. 
Um, so that, I think it's really important to know that it's not just football. It can happen in any contact sport. But to be honest, I've, I've had swimmers with concussions wow. and they miscount and hit the wall. Sure. So. And uh, obviously there's a lot to learn and you guys are offering up a seminar over at Mayo and we have the details that will come up here in just a second. Now one of the things they ask is to RSVP, the number is 904-953-7395. There's all the details there. If you missed anything, go to our website, rivercitylivetv.com or you go to mayoclinic.org. Thank you so much for all your time and information. Stick around, more to come right after this.